I'm going to let everybody in on a little secret. You don't think the publishing industry is doomed, but what I we want to know is why. Well, the publishing industry has uh, been doomed as long as I've been in the publishing industry, <laughs> which is 25 years. So uh, it seems as if uh, it's an industry that is in a state of perpetual crisis, uh, has been for seemingly 100 years, whether it's the contraction of bookstores, whether it's consolidation at the, uh, at the publisher level. So uh, I, I would actually contend that the, the industry has shown itself as uh, a remarkably resilient industry uh, and able to weather uh, a number of storms. If we'd been having this conversation 10 or 15 years ago, I think that uh, few people would have predicted that publishers are actually in as good a position as, as we find ourselves. What is the number one challenge facing the industry right now? Because we hear about so many different threats. Well, I would say it's, uh, it's a bit cliche to say, but it is the, the proverbial innovator's dilemma. We are essentially, uh, we have a, a legacy business, which in many sectors is still the primary format, print, uh, and yet we're trying to build up our, our, digital, in, uh, our digital arms. Uh, and uh, so it's that classic, that classic notion, much like Netflix, when they were building up all their warehouses, but also hmm. realizing that people would not be sending little red envelopes through the mail. Uh, can publishers make as much on e-books as they can on real books? Well, it's a question of dissemination. I think that we've found that when we take some of our backlist bestsellers and offer them at, uh, at modest prices for short periods of time, we can actually reach a much larger number of people. And we're a mission-led uh, organization, in fact, the entire university press industry, and there are over 100 university presses in the country, uh, are, are mission-led and are all about getting the word out. So I like the idea of selling more books uh, for less sure. money. So what about the consolidation that we've seen in the industry, and how has that led to a sort of new shape with new opportunities and certainly more firepower that you can have to put these kind of skills to use? Yeah, well, I think when, when, when people talk and worry about, about consolidation, I think there's, a, uh, I would argue, uh, an overemphasis on the editorial component. There's this notion that there'll be a, uh, less diversity in terms of the number of books that are offered. Uh, and I think that when, when you have consolidation, what, what organizations uh, are looking for, and you know this better than I do, is uh, they're looking for efficiencies oftentimes in their back office operations, oftentimes in the way in which they are uh, distributing their wares. And I think that that's been uh, proven time and again. We've been, the industry the industry has been consolidating for 15 or 20 years, uh, and that, that's happened both at the publisher level and, again, at, at the retail level in various ways. How has Amazon, say, changed the way you have to do business? Well, Amazon has, and, and all of online book selling has meant that we actually can reach our, uh, our market in uh, a great many places in a way that we once weren't able to. I think that uh, the onset, uh, before even we were talking about e-books, the onset of digital printing meant that publishers weren't taking these enormous risks on print runs. So we actually have become, in, in many ways, a more efficient industry. You said a moment ago, though, that it's, the hope is that you sell more books for less money. How much less money? Well, that's the big question, right? I mean, that, that is... That is well, what's it like? Give us a snapshot. What's it like right now? Relative to where it was 25 years ago, how much less are you getting... Uh, per book relative to the cover price. Yeah, well, I think, it, again, it ranges uh, on the type of book. There are highly specialized works that, that certain publishers publish that are uh, hundreds of dollars, right. even in e-book form. But I think that the, uh, you know, the range has been from special promotions as, as low as three or $4, dollars, three or four dollars, uh, to in the neighborhood of 12 even $20. So it, it has ranged, depending on... In your effort to sell more books for less money, is there a specific editorial focus for you right now, a genre, perhaps, that you're more focused on strategically? Well, I think one of the things that, that I'm always struck by is how the, the Internet has, has highlighted that we are essentially a tribal species, right? We organize mm -hmm. ourselves into like-minded communities. And where the university press world, I think, has, has benefited is that we, uh, the academy, higher education, is organized into fields, disciplines, that are essentially tribal. And uh, so I think we're, we're able to, to realize those efficiencies through, through the Internet in a, in, a, in a more effective way. Has the business model changed? You don't deal with agents the same way, you don't pay writers the same way, and if so, how? I, I would actually uh, say quite the opposite. I'm amazed at how little the business model has changed. Should we it deal though? very much with agents still. Well, I think that publishers shouldn't be defensive. You know, people have been, uh, uh, for saying, the, the, our, our demise for many years. I think we need to be very clear eyed about the value that we add. We have moved from a guild like industry that is all about manufacturing to an industry that is essentially service based. And people will tell us whether or not. Uh, our services are valuable, and if they aren't, uh, we'll go away. Aspects of what we do will go away. 
Uh, Oxford's a reference publisher, and uh, uh, a lot of our reference publishing has shifted online. Well, it's been fine. a lot of the, I mean, you're not the only industry that's sort of been suffering from this shift. We've seen it in the newspaper business, for instance. Any lessons you can draw from these other industries that well, have I'm, faced similar I'm, challenges? I'm very pleased that we're not relying on advertising dollars, I would say, is the first uh, conclusion I draw. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I think we have actually learned, uh, it has been an evolutionary process, and we are moving more and more towards a digital model, but we've managed, I think, quite successfully to, to make that transition, which isn't to say that there aren't going to be enormous challenges. What are the lessons, though, to, to Sarah's point, if it's not from newspapers, for example, how about uh, music, for example, like the iTunes Store or Netflix, for example? Can you draw lessons from those business models? Uh, yeah, I think the lessons are that we need to, uh, we've had a linear model of delivery where we made things, we made physical books, uh, again, the manufacturing point, and now we are basically in a much more fragmented environment, and we have to take advantage of all of those possibilities. Are people going to want books by chapters? Are people going to want uh, chunks of content? Uh, the number of business models that are uh, being presented to publishers as to what uh, uh, startups want to do with their content is, is just staggering. How do you decide? Well, that's what we, you know, that's what we're, I guess that's, that, that's what you're the being fun of it, you know, that, yeah, that's the, that's the part where we're uh, constantly trying to say, which is, you know, something that's, what, what, what's a business model that's going to last and has potential and we want to invest in, and what is something that's going to be a, a fly-by-night idea? Is there one that you like? Uh, there are many that I like. I mean, like, one that you could tell us about so that we can actually walk away thinking, oh, that's something I didn't know about. Well, I think that there's a lot of potential around uh, the notion of, of lending books. I mm -hmm. think that that's one of the things that we're, we're looking at and exploring, and, uh, uh, but the, even that is, is fairly early days. Disintermediating the library. Well, <laughs> I think the libraries continue to be very crucial partners to us.